This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV, and we're here today with Gregory Darling, the chairman and the founder of AST, to discuss hybrid solutions and how this is impacting digitalization and operational efficiencies in the maritime sector. Gregory, again, I truly appreciate you joining us. And, you know, as you founded the company, I like to always ask, how is a AST most the same and most different from the company that you started? Hi, well, uh, thanks for uh, inviting me on. Um, AST was originally called Applied Satellite Technology because we want to apply satellite technology. I was a dissatisfied user, and uh, that's the real kicker that started the business um, because it was complicated and difficult. And so we've always tried to make it simple. Um, and the change from voice to data is really the uh, the huge um, difference from, from when it was, you know, 30 years ago. Um, we just had in my set A, voice, that was it. And then an exciting thing called fax came along. But now um, we've, we've become a remote data company. Um, so it is a complicated business now. It used to be simple, just one voice channel. Now you have two, three systems on board, and how do you choose those? So that really is the uh, the difference between then and now. Um, so Gregory, as I'm sure that you can attest, uh, you know there is a lot of competition in your space. What specifically makes AST stand out in what is increase, increasingly a crowded field? Okay, well, what, one of the advantages is we're not huge, and huge organizations tend to have... Uh, processes and systems that are not very flexible. A long time ago, there was a car rental company, and I expect you know the name of it, and they had a tagline, which was, uh, we try harder, and uh, that stuck in my mind. And uh, also, my background is running ships. I bought ships, I've sold ships, I've had arguments with the cook, you know, all of that stuff. Um, so I'm very familiar with uh, the difficulties that you can have on board. When the company started, I used to test everything myself. I would test it in the way it's to be used in the field. So that's the cables, that's connect the connectors, make sure it works. And that discipline has carried on within the business. Certainly, if we're going to provide equipment to a ship directly, then we test it before we go and we have spares in the box when we attend. That really is the difference. We're small and we are competent and we come from that background of knowing how to solve those problems. So it's not just all about the cost of the equipment or the cost of the airtime. It's to do with how you deal with customers. Um, but can you update us? Can you give us a by the numbers look at AST today using the metrics of your choice? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, we started just over 30 years ago and uh, we've uh, maintained steady growth throughout that period. We haven't borrowed any money and that's probably the, uh, the key uh, differentiator. Um, we have about 160 staff, turnover is 75, 80 million dollars. Um, marine business is about 60%, land business is 40%. Um, government and military is about 20%, commercial is 80%. Direct 50%, indirect 50%. So all of those percentages don't quite add up, but you can probably get a feeling of uh, the sort of business that we are. You know, you said at an interesting point because there are a myriad of transformations currently happening in maritime uh, led by, of course, digitalization, decarbonization and autonomy. But let's look at decarbonization and hybrid systems on board boats and ships, uh, because that seems to be the most topical for ship owners today. Um, I guess specifically the question to you is how is the evolution of hybrid solutions impacting the digitalization end of the business? Think of a ship with one or two satellite data pipes. Let's call them data pipes because that's what they are. And they have a cellular or an LTE data pipe. So that's three, four data pipes. And each of those services provide a different degree of performance for the user. So what you have is a network on a vessel that then moves into other networks because as you move the vessel away from cellular, they're then going to go on to a satellite bearer. And then maybe that satellite bearer might be uh, blocked or the coverage might not actually extend to where you are. So then you've got to go on to another one. And so the networking on board within 
the context of different performance from different suppliers or different systems means that it's complicated. So how do you know if you've got the best cost-effective solution at any one time? So that knowledge is really important for us to transmit to our customers. And we can do that with the onboard devices uh, as much as uh, with just talking to people. Because if you're in the middle of the Atlantic, the coverage is gonna be different to when you're approaching Rotterdam. And a lot of IT people understand it, but don't quite get it. And so it's not really an IT issue, it's a networking issue, but it's a micro networking issue. And, and getting that message over is actually um, part of our task. And we do most of the time. Sometimes people get frustrated, especially if there's a, a football or a cricket match on and everybody wants to watch it and then the bandwidth demand goes nuts and we can't provide. I'm sure you understand. So it's a more complex solution. And, 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 and that's the issue because the demand for internet connectivity has just gone through the roof. I mean, gone are the days of the uh, midday telex where we are. It, it, it was just a, just a position of the vessel. Now it's a whole range of, um, of services. And it does get complicated because if you've got Inmarsat systems on board, there's a different range of pricing for Inmarsat systems, Iridium systems, Vsat systems, and then there's the disruptor Starlink, of course. So our job really is very much more advisory now and to recommend a particular package of um, connectivity to meet a need and it varies if you're international if you're going across a particular um, ocean or you're just coastal um, so everybody wants this strange thing called internet connectivity and it's just going on and on and on which is a driver for the business so even though um, there's a lot of competition, the actual costs per unit are really going down at the moment. So the, the user is benefiting, but um, sometimes they don't quite appreciate that. Uh, you know, I know that ASD recently introduced its new integrated remote asset management system or IRAMS. How has it been received by the industry? Okay, what is it? Rem okay, IRAMS, the three letters in the middle, remote asset management. So there is a demand and a need for people to know what's going on. So if you have, for example, um, two engines on a vessel, um, it's great to know the fuel consumption. It's great to know the differential fuel consumption in real time between those two, because if one has got, say, a tipped um, um, propeller, then it's going to be using more fuel. And you can actually see the performance of one engine against another. That's a bit of monitoring. You can also control things. You can turn things on and turn things off. And so we've got one variation of that particular package for um, working on wind farms where you can turn on and turn off a generator. It's, un it's not very widely known that most um, um, wind generators have actually got a diesel generator on board because there's a, there's a requirement to provide a, a certain level of service. And if the wind isn't blowing, you might have to turn your diesel generator on. Um, or indeed, if there's a tech going to the, uh, the location, he needs to have power. So to be able to turn engines or compressors on or off, whether they're on a fixed location or on a ship is quite useful. Um, and if there's um, say a temperature alert or another issue that's important to you, even if a vessel is sailed or is not sailed or is going into a, into a geo-fenced area or not, all that information can be set up so that uh, the operator, uh, can manage his business more efficiently. And that's really all it is. So with that data, with that information, you can manage your remote asset more efficiently. Can you point to a digital solution for one ship owner, one fleet, one vessel that you believe best embodies the connectivity and efficiency solutions offered by ASD? Actually, no, because what we offer is um, a menu. So if you go into a restaurant, you might want to have a starter, a main course and a coffee. You might want to have two starters and just a dessert. So our approach is to have that menu and we can provide one, two, three SATCOM systems with cellular integration or not. You can have remote network management. You can monitor this, that or the other. So we haven't actually got 
anyone who does everything. We've got people who can tailor their solution. Well, we can tailor our solution to their needs. And I think that gives a more cost-effective and practical way of going forward.